We left with the PPI resistant GERD. We have four t possibilities. We have uh, something called acid pocket. We have sometimes the non-acid reflux. We are uh, sometimes overestimating non-acid reflux and a hypersensitivity and functional heartburn. This is the four categories for the PPI resistant GERD. How far non-acid reflux is important? This very uh, long way uh, uh, or old study showed that if the patient already have symptomatic patients or no treatment, most of the patient will have acid reflux. But if you already have double dose proton pump and still there is some uh, symptoms, then non-acid reflux could be present. So the non-acid reflux is not there, but how much in non-acid reflux, it will be uh, uh, talked in a second here. The acid pocket is a, a, a syndrome that a, a sort of pocket that uh, the, the body put uh, or secrete a lot of acid above the level of the food. And this a uh, lot of uh, freshly uh, secreted acid juice uh, over the, uh, the, the uh, food, it come, can come up to the esophagus uh, uh, and cause some sort of uh, uh, reflux in the postprandial period only. So impedance will measure or pH metry will measure what we have. What we have, we can hear, this is the standard, uh, this is pH metry. If you have less than four, then the patient will have some symptomatic. This is the Bravo capsule, and the standard is uh, just putting a catheter, but the Bravo capsule could be put for 48 hours standard, or you can even replace the battery for another 48 hours. Uh, but now it's going on the way to the impedance, and the impedance by measuring the difference of the uh, uh, impedance between uh, uh, multiple areas along the esophagus, you can differentiate between whether the bolus past is f food or fluid or gas. What, which, which of which? Impedance or pH? Impedance is, is costly, pH is less costly. So uh, you can use uh, uh, imp impedance only if the patient already documented GERD and who is already on PPI. But if the patient is not diagnosed to be GERD, then you need to diagnose if he is GERD. So off PPI and put the pH, and you will uh, have the majority of patients will have acid reflux. But this will diagnose only acid reflux. This will diagnose acid and non-acid uh, reflux. So how frequent we have? How frequent you have these syndromes? Uh, PPI non-responders, persistent GERD, symptoms despite treatment, this Half of them will be functional heartburn, half of them will have reflux hypersensitivity, and persistent acid reflux is very low. It's around 7 to 8 percent. So PPI is very efficient to decrease the acid. If the patient does not respond, then we have something else in most of the time. So how can we differentiate that? Functional heartburn or hypersensitivity, if the patients already have heartburn, but without evidence of reflux. That means that there is no association between the symptoms. If the patient will have symptoms and have the button, put it, you don't find it later on next day. If you have the data, you don't have it uh, responding to reflux. So the patient have functional heartburn and this is a spectrum of functional gastrointestinal disease. Reflux hypersensitivity, there is a sort of reflux, but with normal acid exposure. So the patient have a sort of hypersensitivity of the whole of the esophagus to the normal acid.